Hello, race fans. My name is Rob Howden, the voice of the USF Pro Championships presented by Continental Tire. As you all know, we are just weeks away from the start of the 2024 season as we get set to go to the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. And now we're in the off season. We're getting close so an opportunity for us to meet some of the new drivers who will get this uh, program underway. And joining me here, of course, today from J. Howard Driver Development to USF Juniors, essentially rookies, G3 Argeros and Ava Dobson. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I know St. Petersburg isn't the start for you guys. You guys have to wait for, for Nola, but how excited, G3, we'll start with you. Are you to get this season underway? I'm super excited. It's been a great off season and especially transitioning out of go-karts into cars. It's been a great experience and it's a great experience to just hear that we're super close to the season and we're excited to get championship it's time racing. to get going, right? Of course. Ava, what about you? Off seasons are tough, right? It's called the off season, but you know you did a lot of testing, you did a lot of work in the gym. Uh, how excited are you to finally go racing? I'm so excited. I mean, I'm so excited to see how my work has paid off. And you know, after F4, I feel confident like racing again and like with harder people. Like, it's going to be a competitive season. Competitive, sure. yes. Yeah. More competitive. I'm really excited. So let's take this opportunity. I think the key thing right now is the fact that most people don't know who you guys are, right? They've been following our USF Pro Championships, your first year in USF Juniors. You did a couple races last year. G3, let's start with you. Who are you? Where are you from? Let's give us some backstory. So um, my name is G3 Argeros. I'm from the great state of California, and I live right in the heart of, you know, surfing and acai bowls in Newport Beach, California. <laughs> Um, other than obviously racing, I love surfing, water sports, I spend a bunch of time at the beach, and then other than that, I love to go to the gym, working out is definitely somewhere where I find a lot of strength and, you know, Honestly, I relax a lot when I go to the gym. It's a way for me to really clear my head before race weeks. That's kind of the balance, right? The yin and the yang. You'll be our resident Californian, our surfer this year. You did a lot of karting. I know you've both done a bunch of karting as well. Talk about a little bit about your karting career. I know you did a lot of major events. Yes, so I started karting at the you know ripe young old age of six when I got put right in a little cadet cart. And since then, it's been great. I've loved racing right from the first time I hopped in a go-kart. and. I ran USPKS, Pro Tour, Pro Karts. I ran juniors in KA Junior and X30 Junior for two years. And then, you know, my last go kart races were about a year ago before I made the position to cars. And I was actually racing in KA Senior where I had some, some good results yeah. and definitely got to show that. You know, a junior at the young age of 13 can still break into senior and put down good results. I love that. Ava, let's go to you. Same question. Uh, who are you? Where are you from? Let's get some background from you. I'm Ava. I'm from Franklin, Wisconsin, or Brookfield. <laughs> and almost the same age. I was seven, and we just did karting at Badger. And we did, overall, we just were like, oh, okay, let's try something new. And then we went to like the PKS, the Scusa, and then we went to Vegas. And then I kind of had a setback for a while, and then we went with Fennec, and I felt like I just progressed a lot, and they're kind of like almost the reason I'm here today. I mean, obviously Franklin, they've done so much for me, but like, I feel like I just progressed a lot in one moment, and that kind of like led me into F4. Every driver kind of has that kind of aha moment, dude, when, you're, when you're a young driver. You can be racing club, whatever it may be, you have that aha moment. But G3, let's go back to you, because so where did the love of the sport come from? You said you got into a cadet car to kill, you know, when you were younger, six years old. Where did it come from? Was, it, was the family into racing? What was it? So um, it's been definitely part of my you know lineage for a while. Yeah. My dad was super into you know adrenaline junkie, everything okay. that ran, everything that was loud. Loved power boats, loved fast cars, all that. But sadly, he passed away about two years ago. So I definitely carry on his image through my racing and. Definitely, you know, my mom and I, we try to stay very positive about it. And definitely, you know, at the start lines, I think about my dad a lot. But my big aha moment really came when I was in juniors and I had, you know, this decision of whether I, you know, keep racing because weight was a really big issue for me. Okay. I, I used to have, you know, I used to be bigger, had a lot of problems with weight and I cut 40 pounds in three months. Wow. So I basically lost two pounds a week and I went on a calorie deficit, worked out five hours a day in the gym, six days a week and 
that was my real big moment. To get down to where you needed to be, because in karting, there's a minimum weight that you're, you have to hit. So if you're too big, you can't get down to that weight. That's an amazing thing to do, especially as a 13 year old. Yeah, it took a lot of hard work and dedication and especially, you know, choosing to really distance myself from all my friends. You know, I had to quit going to normal school and start doing a homeschool program to keep up with this. And I really had to distance myself for really about six months to put down the work and put in all the energy and time to get down from, you know, my weight to my the minimum weight of go-karts. And, you know, it really took a lot, but I'm so happy I did it because now I'm here in cars and we're doing really well. I'm really excited for the future. And I would have to say that that discipline that you had to be able to do that, which is a tough thing to do, let's, let's be real, when you're 12, 13 years of age, I know I like the candy, you eat, the soda, the hanging around with the buddies, whatever it may be, but that discipline's probably gonna pay off and would continue to pay off here in cars. Yeah, I definitely keep you know using those strategies that I used when I was cutting a bunch of weight in you know like pre-race week. I'll eat salads. Aussie bowls are one of my favorites. I love being super healthy, fruits, salads, and before race week, I just feel a lot better if I do eat healthy, and I, I like to implement that in my daily life. 100%. Ava, you brought up uh, uh, Badger, which is, of course, that uh, Dousman, that track in Wisconsin. Legendary race track. It's been around for 50 plus years. So many big, great drivers have come from there. Where, what, how did you first get into racing? Was it a family thing? How, what, what drug you into a go kart? Well, my dad did a lot of cup car stuff, okay. and then his dad did like super late stuff, I guess. And my dad, we met people actually at like an indoor like go karting track, and they were like, "Oh, why don't you try to do something like real?" I was like, "Okay." <laughs> and so we went out there, and it was like snowing, and I was like seven, and it was cold in Wisconsin, and. I did three laps and I would come back in. I'd be like, I want to go back out. And my dad's like, why don't you just stay out there? <laughs> I would do the same thing. I would just go back out, come back in for three laps. And I was like, okay, I guess I like it. The amazing <laughs> thing is, because you, I know you've fought fast for it, like G3, you ran a bunch of big races, right? USBK, as you mentioned, some of these major series. But you've also been getting behind the wheel of a shifter car a little bit. I know you did a bit of that last year. What's, people don't realize what it's like to drive a 125cc shifter oh car. It's gosh. a violent ride for sure. Yeah, um, we did it a lot for like strength training just because almost kind of like the opposite of G3. I was really like skinny, like bony, no muscle. Obviously for girls it's hard to gain muscle and that's why I do boxing and stuff yeah, now. But the shifter definitely helped like, almost kind of like the perception of like a car. It's like a car, it's like the most similar thing you're gonna get mm -hmm. to a car. It's how fast, the way it brakes, the front brakes. Like it just helps so much. Like even the speed, like I feel like I'm going faster in a shifter car than I am in a car. Like, well you are so one inch off the ground, right? Scraping yeah. the seat. <laughs> So G3, let's go to you now. And uh, the question now is you obviously come out of, out of, out of, uh, out of karting. What was it that made you come to the USF Pro Championship? Where did you say, hey, I want to go run USF Juniors? So USF really spoke out to me because it's definitely the best series, in my opinion, to really feed the best drivers into the top level of motorsport. And there's so many different ways you can go after running USF. And it's just such a great series for really teaching drivers how to become the best that they can be. And so for me, other than other series like F4 and you know Skip Barber, I chose to come here because I was in the car a very few amount of times before, you know, Jay came in and decided to, you know, take me under his wing and really, you know, make me part of his program and try to do a really good job this year in juniors. So we, we really felt good about that. Well, you look at Jay Howard, right? of course, as we all know, a former Indianapolis 500 uh, multi-time starter and, and won the USF 2000 championship and an Indy Lights championship, but also fantastic at driver development, as we know. And you look at the newest driver who's gone to IndyCar and Christian Rasmussen was one of the guys that worked for Jay. How about you, Ava? Well, I know you did some F4 racing. What was the ultimate goal, even though you're there learning cars, was it, I got to get to the USF Pro Championships? Yeah, definitely. I felt like the F4 was a little like, it was a lot, honestly. Like there was a lot of cars. Like there was like, I like NOLA, there was 30 cars. I was doing the development series then, but like even watching them, like I saw just the difference between the series I was in and the USF. Like you guys just get things done faster. Like the cleaning up, the caution laps. Like I felt like I was doing more caution laps. I was doing like actual laps. <laughs> it happens. I still love them though. I mean, I, I learned so much there, but I feel like I'm gonna learn so much more here. So you're with, both of you with Jay Howard Driver Development. What are your expectations, G3? You're coming in as a rookie right now, right? Every time you get on the racetrack, all the off-season testing you've done. We're looking at NOLA Motorsports Park. We've got spring training coming soon. What are your expectations for 2024? 
Um, I'm really, really excited. And this, this, I've done this kind of my whole career. I've come into juniors super young. I was 11. Senior, I was 13. Definitely super young in all those classes. So you've been on the low end all the way. Yes. Right. And okay. now, you know, I just turned 14. I was 13 when I was testing in the car for the last six months. And I'm really excited and truly I think we're going to be a contender this year. If we look down the through the schedule, is there a track you're like, I can't wait to get to that racetrack? For me, yeah. I'm really excited for Portland. I know that really? it's the championship weekend, the final race of the year. West Coast guy. Yes. <laughs> Closest to home. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have some friends, some family come and support. And I really think that Portland as the championship race is going to add a lot of intensity, and I'm excited to be in that championship this year. Okay, so you're going to be in the fight. I like yes. that. Ava, let's go to you ask the same question, because last year, we of course saw you at a couple races last year, but you were right in the hunt. You were kind of getting the, getting the feel of the car, but you were right there. You were running top 10 on a regular basis. What are your thoughts coming out of the gate here when we get started at NOLA? Just to keep progressing as much as I can, I and mean, like, I'm honestly just, I'm still learning so much. Like, it's a completely different car from F4, and I'm just learning how to, like, be like the best driver I can be because it's a lot harder being a girl in like an all-guy sport. Like yeah. I feel like I need, I'm kind of by myself, like I just got to like fend for myself and a lot of people kind of look down on me for that but I try to always just like I'm just going to be aggressive and just try to work my hardest that I can. That, like, obviously uh, is a big question, right? We don't get a lot of females in our, in our series. We've had a number of come through, the Sabre Cooks, the Lindsay Brewers who have come through the program. You're essentially the lone driver right now as a female in USF Juniors. Does that change your mindset, or is it I put the visor down, I'm exactly the same as anybody else? I'm the same as anybody else. I will race you as same as everybody else does. If you race me aggressive, I'll race you aggressive. Do you feel like you're you're carrying the flag, though, for, for racers, female racers? You know, there's lots of female go-kart racers out there, really good ones coming up through the cadet ranks, the junior ranks. Are you that kind of shining light that can maybe set the, uh, you know, set the stage for them? Yeah, I like to think that. I like to, like, be, like, an example. Like, if I can do it, you can do it. Like, I came from nothing to something. Like... If I can do it, everybody else can do it, you know? Yeah, no doubt about that. So, Jay Howard, we're talking about driver development. You're saying how much you're learning. Tell me a little bit about the culture under Jay's tent, the, the camaraderie, the, the chemistry in the team. How do you feel and how, how is, have they done to help you develop as a driver? Yeah, Jay, he's like, I like praise him. He's like, I love the guy. He's like, it feels like I'm like with my family, like another piece of my family when I come here. And like being at the track is just like being at home. Like they're so nice, like they're funny and like get serious when they need to be and they help me so much. Like same with Joe, like Joe helps with everything. Like I can just ask him anything and he'll always be there to answer me. Yeah, you look at the Team G3, you've got of course Jay Howard, Joe Hidalgo, the whole family, right? We hear that word a lot. I don't care what team you're with. It's like if you're with that team, it's kind of the family that you, they'll kind of wrap themselves around you. You were of course new. She spent a couple of years there, a couple of races last year in, in juniors. How's it been for you over the off season? For me, it's been great. I'm, I came in with um, very low expectations and right from the get go, we were super great in the cars. And you know, that's just something that I'm really thankful for that you know, I was gifted in this way to be good in the car, but Jay really helped with fine tuning all of my abilities to the best that I can be. And especially if I'm trying to put my best foot forward to fight this year, Jay's helped with everything. I come in and I'll have teammates, other drivers, Jay, I'll have people, even my teammates have been asked, have asked, you know, Joe to tell me something if they've been behind me. And especially the drivers help me a lot. There's but your fellow drivers yes, always with you. Even, you know, the people you're fighting against still help me massively. And Jay goes over everything firsthand with you, and Jay is amazing as well. And I'll say, uh, interesting thing, because I, I went out with you guys, uh, you were there, you actually obviously were with them at that point, but at Road America, dr track walks. Right? One of the things that you get to do every race is you get to spend the day before, you tr walk the track with your, your, your coaches, your team owner. Uh, I went out with the team at Road America, and I watched Jay and the way he kind of rolled everything out. His track walks and what he does and how he tells you to take corners, absolutely unbelievable. I'm sure you learned so much from those track walks. Yeah, he truly dives deeper than anyone else that I've seen, especially in, you know, the video and the data portion. He really looks at every little bump and how every little thing that you do with the pedals and the steering will affect your car to really maximize every last millisecond that you can get out of the car. And Ava, Ava you and I were there. That's kind of it, right? You're connecting all the video you've, you've, you've seen to what he's telling you. You're having to connect that together for the first session. How invaluable is it for you to get a chance to be out there with Jay? 
It means so much to me. I mean, obviously he's driven before, so he like knows all these tracks, and I feel like that just helps so much because he like I feel like he like really knows what he's talking about, and he like knows the feeling that we're feeling in the car. Yeah. And I feel like it's a really big deal. So let's talk about your favorite track, or is there a track you're looking forward on the schedule? I know that we talked West Coast already. Are you going to lean and stay in Wisconsin? Yes, I'm very excited for Road America. Like, I did really good there, and I feel like really confident there because in F4 I raced there, juniors I raced there last year, and now I'm going to be there again. And it's kind of like home for me, and like all my sponsors were able to come out and watch me, my family. Like, it's just like a, it's a safe place. I like that. It's a safe space. A fantastic racetrack, Road America icon for sure. Let's talk about development, you guys, as drivers. One of the interesting things is go back to think about how you were at this time last year, right? Right. Last February, last March of last year. How far have you progressed just through the season and through the off season? I've honestly progressed a lot. I mean, I personally think that my dad sees it, Jay sees it. And honestly, when I just started F4, I could barely hold on to the steering wheel. Like I was struggling to like get through the corners, like what am I doing? And like, I feel like now, like the boxing has really helped me too with just like aggression level. And like Jay has really taught me how to like, you need to fight for what you want. You can't just like sit there and like let people do what they want. You need to like fight back. Up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't let people like get in your way or act like they own you. You gotta own them. <laughs> And that's one of the things about it I think people don't realize, you know, obviously people that don't know much about motorsports, they don't realize how physical it is to drive these cars. You are obviously take, you're doing boxing, you're in the gym. How much time do you spend in the gym, both of you guys? Let's start with you. Um, well, boxing is 45 minutes a day. A day? Yeah, I do it seven days a week. Wow. Um, whenever I'm home, obviously. And uh, I do track at kind of before that for like an hour or two. And then maybe after, if I get the chance, I'll go to the gym and do maybe some like heavy lifting. Mm -hmm just to like get it done for the day. G3, obviously we know that you were able to put the focus in to lose the weight to run uh, junior karate and get to that minimum weight limit. How much are you working out these days? So I really keep working out all the way through even after I've lost the weight because for me to be at the top level and you know, especially to try and win championships and show how good you are, you need to go full force ahead. And so for me, I spend six, sometimes seven days a week in the gym, and I'm always four or five hours a day in the gym. Wow, seriously. I have, you know, a treadmill, a bike, a whole rack, you know, dumbbells, barbells. I have the whole setup at home. And then even after the gym, I'll spend probably three hours a day on my simulator too. I practice even when we're in the middle of the off season and I won't be driving this track for six months, I'll still go and run a bunch of laps on it. And really, I, we, we talk a lot about that is there's, there, there's so much in racing that you can't control, right? That's outside of your realm of control. Working out and being on the sim, those are two things that obviously you can control, get yourself in the best shape possible. Let's now talk about the season. What are expectations? What, what's, a, what's a positive check mark for you this season? It, it, do you need to win the championship? Or are you here to get experience and try to log in some top fives, maybe a podium or two? So for me, we're really looking to be in that top three fight for most of the races. Yeah. Hopefully a win or two, but l fighting for the championship is where we want to be. We don't want to be in the midfield or the back. We're here to we're here to contend. We're here to compete. Yeah. And Ava, what about you? I definitely want to like try to get up there and like kind of prove something almost, and just kind of prove it to myself because I feel like in F4 I really struggled a lot with like the competition was really hard in F4 mm -hmm. and like it's still going to be now. But I feel like now that I've progressed, I feel like I'll be able to like work up there and be in the top five. And as long as I keep going at it, aggressive with everybody I race against, obviously clean. You know, I feel like I think I'll be able to pull it off a few times. I think one of the things about USF Juniors is you're because you're so new into the, into the, the ladder system, you're really gauging against yourself sometimes. As long as there's personal growth, really you're moving in the right direction. That's, I think probably Jay would tell you, that's kind of the key, right? Always try to race within yourself to try to find that extra speed. Yep. So let's wrap this up with with this deal. You, you've obviously come into the USF Pro Championships, coming up through karting and, and watching this program. Are there some drivers that you would say maybe it would have been an icon that you watch? I want to do it like this driver. Was there somebody you watch coming up through that's had success in this program that you want to kind of emulate? Well, someone we were talking about just a little while ago, Rasmussen, yeah. one of Jay's graduates, yeah. someone who's made it to next at the moment, and he's kind of on the same path that we're, I'm trying to go on for. Him, he did a year in each series and did put down really great results in each series. And for me, that's what I'm trying to do. You don't have to win every championship, 
But if I come in as a rookie and get top fives, top tens, and finish in the championship in that top 10, top seven ratio, then bigger teams in IndyCar and Indy Lights are going to see, hey, this kid's good. They're going to start looking at you yeah. for sure, right? And Rasmussen, like you said, won championships all the way up with Jay the entire time. He's going to run for ECR, Ed Carpenter Racing this year. Uh, what about you, Eva? Was there some driver that came up through this the USF Pro Championships that you said, that's what I want to emulate? Um, definitely when I was younger, when Pato used to race in the championship, yeah. like the USF, I was like, oh, like that's why he's still my favorite IndyCar driver. <laughs> like, I love that guy. But honestly, I've seen him like progress so much the years, and I'm just like, he started from nothing and became an IndyCar driver. I'm like, oh, like I really look up to him for that, and he like works really hard for everything. And it's has. interesting to think you guys have to kind of th sit back. They were, he was you guys at one point, right? When he was first coming out of karting, right? When he ran, uh, you know, a stock shifter as a junior driver or whatever. He ran all the, he ran against the, you know, the same series, the Scusa series that you guys ran in. They're the same, and that's that's the key, I guess. Sometimes you have to focus on realizing that, that, that they were where you are. You just gotta keep the development rolling, right? Of course, I mean, every step that we take, somebody else has taken before us. And that's why I feel really confident with Jay's program is that he's really pumped out a really fascinating list and resume for all these drivers that have driven through the JHDD ladder. And just from the quality of the drivers that he's put out, I felt that Jay was the best option. And Ava, I think everybody knows the IndyCar is looking for the next female race car driver. Is that going to be you? I really hope so. <laughs> I'll really push to be my best and I'll try my hardest to do anything. I mean, if it's not IndyCar, I want to race something, like whatever it is, as long as I'm racing. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Good luck in 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So these are the future stars of the NTT IndyCar series. As we know, both G3 and Ava looking to uh, make their own mark in this series. They mentioned Pato Award. They mentioned Christian Rasmussen, two drivers who will be, of course, stars in the program this year. But again, this is where you see them first in the USF Pro Championships presented by Continental Tire. Watch both these two drivers for Jay Howard Driver Development here in 2024. Season right around the corner. They'll get started at NOLA Motorsports Park in April. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of the show. My name is Rob Howden. Bye for now.